Hey guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play 999. Last time we left off, we decided to go through door 7, because out of all those choices, that was one that we haven't gone through yet, so... We're here in door 7, it seems to be like a large operating room, and we open this door now, which... I don't even know what the hell it is. We gotta examine it, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, there's something here, what does it say? There's no on top of the table. Iron is 1, salt 2, water is 3. Carbon dioxide equals question mark ammonia something ethanol something. What do you think this is a hint for? Maybe it's got something to do with this box. Maybe it does. This thing won't open. Is it locked? You probably need to put in a passcode. I mean, geez, they even got a keypad on there. How much obvious can you get? I can only I can only enter three numbers. E is for enter and C is for clear. Once you, put the, once you input the number, press E, and once you mess up, press C. Let's give it a shot. So, hmm, well, I don't know it, so I'm going back, but it seems like that that note here is trying to help us out. Irons 1, salt 2, water 3. I don't know what the hell those numbers mean, but we gotta figure out, the, I'm assuming we gotta figure out the numbers for dioxide, ammonia, and ethanol. Actually, can I just put 4, 5, 6? Well, look at the first line. Maybe the question mark represents a number. I know that, you idiot! I mean, that was just, that was just common sense. Where would numbers go after carbon dioxide, ammonia, and ethanol? You tell me, is it gonna give me another hint? Nope. Uh, let's see if I can just put in 4, 5, 6. I doubt it's gonna work, but... You know, sometimes you just have fun with it. Yes, 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 I know. Okay, let's give it another shot. I doubt this is gonna work, but... We'll see what's up. No, that was bad. Okay, no. What is this, though? It's blue liquid. Thank you for telling me that game. It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring out some into the cap? Can't see any reason why not. What's that? It's bright blue. Do you think it's an alien blood? <sighs> Where the hell did that come from? Then what do you think it is, Seven? I don't know, some sort of special bath soap? Ugh, what a boring guess. Better than freaking alien blood. Well, what the hell's in here then? It's red liquid. It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Pouring it out. What's that? It's bright red. Do you think it's blood? No, blood's thicker than that. Then what is it? Beats me. I wish she, uh, she kept the motive of blood in there. Uh, I thought maybe I can mix red and blue to. What does red and blue give again? Purple? Green? Oh, no, not green. Oh, whatever. Uh, I'm an idiot. So, we picked up those. Don't know how much that's gonna help us. Anything else here? What's this? Looks like a can with a spray nozzle. It says CO2. So it's a can full of carbon dioxide. Okay. There's a canister and carbon dioxide on the shelf. The label says CO2. I'm wondering why they're saying that for me. Hey, Junpei! There's a... Dihydrogen monoxide on the shelf. Why did you just say water? It wait. The label says H2O. Okay. Uh huh. Junpei, there's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. How do you know it's iron? The label says FE. FE stands for iron, right? I guess it does. There's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. It says FE on the bottle. Hey Junpei, do you think there are any slugs on this ship? Uh, well, if there are, I was thinking we can put salt on them. What's she pointing at? The label states, uh, NACL, which is... What is it, something chloride? Sodium chloride. Salt, huh? Do you think Seven was a shovel up we put it on him? Hey! You say something? God, don't make that man mad. So there's a bottle of on the salt on the shelf, the label says... That the, cal the formula for salt. Um, I still don't understand what the hell's going on here. Oh, good stuff! Let's go for a drink. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that bottle. It says uh, C2H5O. Um, o, there's that over O zero H whatever, right? It's ethanol. That's right. It's also known as ethanol alcohol. It's pretty much what booze is made of. So you're gonna drink it. Nah, I won't. 
might say that's what it might say that's what it is on the label, but you know there could there could be anything in there. Okay. Hmm. Something stinks. Is it coming from this bottle? It says NH3. Well, that that well that of course stinks. It's ammonia. Jeez. Okay, that's nasty. Bottle of ammonia. Says NH3. Bottle of ethanol. It was. Protecting the table. I wonder do people mix medicine on this thing? I mmm. Salt. Hmm. Well, that's odd. Okay, we've seen all these items in this room. Iron equals one. Salt two. Water three. Carbon dioxide one. I still don't get it. I'm, I'm missing some. It's. It must be obvious, and I'm just not getting it. It must be some of the formulas then. But what exactly? Why the hell is it stopped? I know what to do, game. Uh, what was it? What the hell do they say for iron? It just said FE on it. I don't know what the hell FE is. And then H2. Water. It said water equals 3, and it says H2O. And iron equals 1. Salt to Ah wait 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 Where's where is this again? No 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 It's me is what so one atom and two oxygen atoms. That's what No, that's not what I was kinda of thinking of. There's cancer carbon dioxide in the shelf. CO2 molecule is made up of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. And... Okay, I got it now. Get it. Water equals three, made up of one... You no, know, it's made up of two hydrogen uh, atoms and one oxygen atom. So... That's what we're probably going to say here. H2O must mean hot and O means for orphans. Two hot orphans. Seven, is your head okay? Okay, so we know that iron is three. That must mean I no iron is one. Carbon dioxide is three. I'm gonna see. No, damn, that's salt. And that's gonna be two. Now that's gonna say it just made up of one. And now this is gonna be a lot. It'll see something. No. No. No, is that ammonia? Okay, yeah. So... That's four. So three, four... Th we got numbers three, four, and one. And I need to enter... Three, four... Shoot. No, we already did iron. I'm, I'm an idiot. Carbon dioxide was three. And ammonia was ammonia was four, right? You said ammonia was four. Okay, and then I just need um. That was the other one again. Basically, ethanol is made up of two. Six, two, so it's a nine. Okay, I think I got it. So it's gonna be four. No, three. Three, four, nine? Or am I mixing it up? Oh, God. Hold on. Let's see if I get this right. I'm being a complete idiot. I, I mean, I've been in this room for a long time now. This puzzle's way too damn long. I just couldn't think. Is it three, four, nine? Yes, it is. Okay. What the hell's that? It's a fake right arm. It's a right arm of a body. It's kind of creepy. Do I combine it with this? No, I guess not. But there also is this. It's a fake heart. A heart? That thing's super creepy. This ain't good for a heart. Do I put that in the chest? 
No. Huh. Interesting. Well, I don't think there's anything else we can do in here. You think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Clover nodded and left. Jupe was about to follow her when he realized that Seven wasn't following Sue. Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh, well... He looked up at Junpei distractedly and then backed down with the round bottle he held, he held cupped in his large hands. What's that? Response 7 tossed the bottle gently to Junpei. He caught and twisted around to read a label. Ethylene dim diamine tartrate. What? That big word. EDT. It's uh, tartaric that. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that here? I'll well, probably have to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still, it looks like it's clean. It, it looks like it's clean my brain up. Huh? He looked up from the bottle. You remember something? Someone nodded slowly and spoke. I remember a story about EDT. It happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old ED, EDT crystals. They're making it to sell as industrial tank cleaner, like I told you before. But a year after a factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. Water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. This made them into a sort of mutation of the original crystals called a hydrate. Once a crystal turns into a hydrate, though, it's as useless as a cleaner. The factory had just a, had had to just dump the crystals as a hydrate. They were useless. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening to EDT factories everywhere, even ones nowhere, nowhere near the first American factory. They've been, they, they'd, uh, they've been making crystals the same way, with the same materials and the same equipment and environment. But now, all of a sudden, every single crystal they formed turned to a hydrate. In fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even in EDT research done, uh, done years before, they've never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened in the first factory, it just spread. It was like, man, how do you say it? Like the molecules were communicating with one another? Transmitting information in a way humans couldn't perceive. This phenomenon spread throughout the world, right? Shubei looked up at someone with half a smirk. Yeah, it's kind of what we were talking about with Lotus and Santa in door four. I think so anyway, yeah. Seven stared at him, dumbfounded. Yeah, that's... that's it exactly. But how'd you know? I heard another story kind of like that one. When? In the freezer. What? The freezer? Oh, no, no, no. Are you talking about the Ice Nine? Jupiter told Seven in the story he heard from June in the freezer in the kitchen. How one day glycerin began to crystallize in that story of ice that wouldn't melt at room temperature. When Jupe was done, Seven looked at looked thoughtfully and absentmindedly rubbed his scar on his, on his chin. Ice that doesn't melt at room temperature, huh? Sounds familiar? Yeah, hold up. I feel like I can remember something. It's right here. Seven squinted. His eyes stared off into space as if he were trying to desperately focus on something far away. Do you... Hmm... Yeah, do you know something about Ice Nine? Please tell me you do. Do you know anything about Ice Nine? Ice Nine? Ice Nine... Ice Nine... Ice... 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 Suddenly Seven's eyes shot wide open. That's it! I remember now! That woman! She's on this boat! That woman? Alice! Who's Alice? Come on, the woman who won't melt at room temperature! What? It became clear to Seven that Junpei had no idea what he was talking about. He ran his head across his face and took a deep breath. You know how the Titanic sank on April 5th, 1912, right? Yeah. More than 1,500 people died that day. Worst, uh, worst maritime accident in history. What about it? Did you hear about the boat that was sent to collect the dead bodies? Uh, I think that was the RM RMS Ca Carpathia or something, right? It was a cruise liner, just like the Titanic. No, that was the ship that picked up the survivors. The ship that collected the dead bodies was the CS Mackey, um, what, Mackey Bennett? Uh, the McKay Bennett, whatever, showed up on April 17th, two days after the accident. 
and set out from Halifax, a port in Canada, and recovered 306 bodies. The Atlantic that, f that far north was really cold. It would have been, uh, it would have to be, for, it would have to be for there to be icebergs and stuff. Anyway, the bodies they pulled out of water were frozen solid. This isn't a very nice story. So, what happened next? Well, they say the, the McKay Bennett recovered something more than just dead bodies. There's various bits of stuff floating around the water. Things that drowned had, um, things that drowned had carried with them, and or stuff dislodged as the ship sank. One of the things they found was a coffin. A coffin? Yeah, a wooden one. The craftsman who made it um, may, uh, must have been pretty skilled. It wasn't just a wooden coffin, it was all wood. There were no nails or reinforcements, and there was no ga gaps in wood anywhere. It was airtight. The crew got pretty curious about what it might be inside of it and opened it up. They had to get a wedge and hammer to open it, and so it was so well made. Inside, they found a woman, or I guess you should say they found the dead body of a woman. Her hair was thick and black, and her skin was deep brown and didn't show any signs of age or, de or decomposition. They say that she looked gorgeous, like a goddess. She was obviously dead, but everyone who looked at her said she looked uh, she just looked like she was sleeping. Her skin was so lifelike, she looked like she might wake up any minute. She didn't, though. Like the rest of the bodies they found, she was frozen solid. Eventually, then, Mc McKay Bennett finished the search and returned to Halifax. The 306 bodies were unloaded and then taken ashore. However, it was warm enough that they began to melt. They say that the stink was horrible. But there was one body that didn't thaw. The girl in the coffin. That's right. Everybody thought thought for sure that they, 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 she'd melt and start to rot like the rest of them eventually. But weeks passed and nothing happened. And a month that had passed and another and it was summer and she was still frozen solid. After a while people started to say that she was some sort of miracle. Rumors about the girl started to spread and people came to visit Halifax from all over. After a while, people started to call her All Ice. Alice. Holy crap, and that red binder we found in the captain's uh, thing. What the hell is that about then? It said All Ice on it, but it was full of the hieroglyphics. But Jude mentioned something about like an Egyptian goddess. Okay, I th this is kind of starting to make sense, but not really at the same time. Of course, th those rumors didn't last long. Why? Well, she up and, dis and disappeared. One day Alice was there, and the next day she wasn't. They say someone snuck into where they, they were keeping her and stole the body. With the body gone, the rumors followed pretty quickly. And after a while, no one remembered her. You might be able to find something about her if you could find a newspaper from back then, but that's about it. Wait. You just said that she was on this boat. Yeah, I did. Alice has got to be somewhere on this ship. Now, why the hell would you say something like that? Because I know. And just what is it that you know? What happened to Alice after she was stolen? Junpei gulped. Alright, tell me. What happened to Alice? Seven nodded slowly and took on, took on the look of a man recalling something long buried. Well, around that time, the word was that there was a thriving black market in New New York. I mean, I'm sure there there still is, but this was special. All millionaires from all over the world. I've heard that Alice went up for auction there. The person who won the auction was Lord Dash Dashell or Dashell Gordain. You've heard that name before, right? Actually, I think we have. Sir Gordain, isn't he the guy that brought the gigantic, the Titanic sister ship? Yeah, that's him. Although I guess he hadn't he hadn't done that yet. What do you mean? Gordain bought Alice in 1912, and four years later in 1916 he bought the Gigantic, and he and he hit Alice somewhere on the Gigantic, but nobody knows where. He died in 1931, and apparently he died without ever telling anyone where Alice was hidden. However, however, what? Well, he had one close friend who asked him, Where's Alice? And he said, Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge beneath the navel of the gigantic. What the hell's that? Some kind of riddle? Forest of knowledge. 
the library. And that card that we got was for the... Uh-huh. Okay. Things are making a little bit more sense. Your guess is as good as mine. Seven threw his hands up in defeat. So that's it. Whatever you think, I believe it. She's hidden, she's hidden somewhere on the Gigantic. In other words, she's hidden somewhere on this ship. Hmm. Before Jimmy could dispute Seven's rather bizarre claim, they heard Clover's voice from the door. She did not sound pleased. Hey! What are you two doing over there? Stop wasting time and get over here! Okay, okay, we're coming. Ugh. Seven looked at Junpei. Yeah, so anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. With that cryptic remark, he turned and left the room. Junpei was left behind to ponder what he just heard. He tried to remember what Jun had told him earlier. That mummy wasn't just a normal mummy. They say that she was frozen and the story... the hell? Is that a text message? Uh, the story says that um, from the time of its discovery all the way through it to when it was got put on the Titanic. And even though it was carried through the, the desert, it, her body never melted. Was that Egyptian priestess Alice? Had the water in her body become Ice Nine? No, that's nuts. There's no way somebody like that uh, could be could exist. And my phone's going off. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. There's no way somebody like that could exist. Really now. Jubei shook his head, trying desperately to clear it and follow Seven to the operating room where Clover was waiting. Okay, and right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, because it's been going on for a while, and a friend of mine is about to go, come visit anyway, so might as well end the video here. But I think I actually know what's going on now. Behind, beneath the forest of knowledge, there ha that has to be the library. He said all ice, we found that thing that said all ice, it was all a bunch of hieroglyphics, which is ancient Egyptian wording, I guess, and... That card said, Bottom Deck Library. This is insane. I think I kind of actually... I'm getting something out of this. Well, in any case, we'll save... Uh, we'll try getting out of this room in the next episode, guys. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play 999. I'll see you guys later.